So first thing we want to do is mark the diagram uh, with what we know. I saw a lot of people do that. 4x plus 1, 3x plus 6y, 7x minus 5y. I'm guessing what a lot of you did, well, what some of you may have done. Did anybody use the fact that vertical angles are congruent? Some of you know a fact that we have not learned yet. And if you use that, great. It's true. However, I'm going to do it as if you didn't know that fact because we haven't learned that yet in this class. So the two things that we know is that a straight angle equals 180 degrees. So this green angle and this yellow angle, that's a straight angle. They formed to make a straight angle. So I'm going to say 4x plus 1 plus 3x plus 6y equals 180 degrees. That's one of my equations. Now this yellow one and this purple one also make a straight angle. So that's my second equation. How do I know I need two, new, two equations? Yeah, it's got two variables. Now if you did not get this system, I would recommend um, doing it again with me so you have a copy of and you actually get into, your, get into practice how, how to make sure you do this. First thing I would do is simplify. Simplify these equations because I've got some like terms that I can combine. So that's going to be 7x. This is my first equation, my second equation. So I've got 7x plus 6y. I'm going to subtract the 1 from each side and get 179. My second equation is going to become 10x plus y equals 180. And at this point, I make a choice about the strategy I'm going to use to solve this system. One choice is elimination. Does anybody do elimination here? To do elimination, you add both equations up and hope you get a, a variable to eliminate. If I add both of these equations up, they're already in line with each other, will anything eliminate? No. no I'd have to multiply this bottom equation by what? Yeah, I could do that. Ne negative 6, or you could multiply it by 6 and then just subtract. But yeah, probably multiply it by negative 6 and add. But I'm not going to do that, because I think there's an easier way. Which way? Yeah, and why is this problem perfect for substitution? Because of y is already by itself in the second problem. Yeah, I can get y by itself very easily by doing one small thing. What do I have to do to get y by itself? Subtract 10x. So now I've got y equals 180 minus 10x. And whenever I can get that, y by itself, whenever I know what y equals, I know I'm in a good spot because now I can just take this and I'm going to substitute it in for y in my other equation. You've got to substitute it into the other equation. So if I rewrite this, 7x plus 180 minus 10x, 6 times 180 minus 10x, equals 179. Look how organized I'm keeping my work here. After reading 60, 60 uh, tests that I'll be doing this weekend, I'm not, I'm going to, this, this gets old, reading the test. You want to give me reasons to give you points. You don't want me to search for things that might be true and in just a pile of mess of all this stuff. Keep it organized. Give me good reasons to show that you know something. You know, so um, look how I'm just pointing that out because I want to give everybody points, but sometimes you make it difficult for me to do that if I have no idea what you're doing. Keeping your work organized helps me do that. So now I got to distribute 7x plus, what's 6 times 180? What was it? 1080 minus 60x equals 179. So I can combine 7x and minus 60x and I get 53x. Subtract 1080 from each side. And what do I have on the other side? 901. Divide each side by negative 53, and what do I get? Now that I know what x is, 
I can substitute it in in either one of my equations and figure out what y is. What one do you think I'm going to substitute it in for? The top one or the bottom one? Bottom. bottom, definitely. Why? Because if I substitute them for the top, I do have to do 17 times 7, which is more difficult than 10 times 7. Furthermore, this has 6y, so I know I'm going to, when I solve for y, I'd have to divide by 6. I don't want to do that. I can just get it right away on the bottom one. So I'm going to substitute it into the bottom one. So we have 10 times 17 plus y equals 180. I already can tell what it's going to be. What's it going to be? Minus 170, minus 170, y equals 10. Now, if I had time, I would check my answers. I'm not going to do that, though, because I'm trying to be efficient here. Find the measure of angle 4. Well, if I know x is 17, 17 times 4 is 68. Is that right? 68 plus 1, that's 67. These two are supplementary. They add up to 180. Is it 69? Yeah, 68 plus 1. These two are supplementary. They add up to 180. So if angle 1 is 69, what angle do I have to add to get to 180? Measure angle 4. Now, notice how I'm circling this, and I might even somewhere else, but measure of angle 4 equals 111. If you got the answer, make sure I see it on your sheet. All right, moving on to the next one. It, first off, any questions on this? Yeah. How did I get Y? I got, I got Y by um, substituting 17 in for this equation. Yeah. You should have gotten the same thing. Yeah. 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 All right. Next problem. Okay. So right away I know that um, my success or failure on this problem is going to be partially determined by how I mark the diagram. Not only how I mark it, but how I um, represent certain quantities with variables. AD and AS trisect BAP. BAP. So I'm going to be very careful here to make sure I mark everything correctly. Those are all congruent. AS bisects BAT. BAT. And BS is the bisector. So this whole thing is congruent to this whole thing. Does it look like that's congruent? No, but they're telling me it is. NAB is 12 more than DAB. What do I really wish I knew? DAB, because if I knew what DAB was, all I would have to do is add 12 to get NAB. So whenever I really wish I knew what something was, I can call it something. I can represent it with a variable. So DAB is x. Oh, well, if that's x, then this is also x. And this is also x. And NAB. NAB is what? X plus 12. It's 12 more than that one. Yeah? What do we think? Is this also X? X or 2X? See, this is where it depends on how well you mark your diagram. Go ahead. Yeah, the green and the turquoise are the congruent ones. The green's worth 2x, so this side must be worth 2x. x is already taken up, so what's left over? 1x. What I'm guessing, for those of you that thought it was 2x, was you probably thought that this was the bisection, because it looks like it is. 
you probably thought, oh, these are all three over here, so this is going to have to be three over here. But that's not what it said. It said that this was the bisection. And this is where I said your success or failure on this problem is probably going to be partly determined how well you mark the diagram. I marked it with these double arcs. I put these double arcs here so I knew that I visually saw this angle and this angle is the same. Yeah. Yeah. There is still two x on this side. And then two x on the other. There's x and x and x and x. Uh -huh. So each one of these is worth two x. Okay. Final given is TAS equals. Uh, oh, thank you. TAR is 42. Oh, well, that's nice. They're even giving me an angle measure. Great. All right. Next thing. Now we've completely marked the diagram. We put it in with our variable system. Now I've got to write an equation. Variables are good, or equations are good for when you have variables, when you want to know the value of a variable. Yeah? Yeah, what's the equation? Okay, so you assume that this whole angle is a straight angle. So you subtract it off this piece, and what did you get for the remainder here? Great. So uh, you did a step in your head, or maybe you did it on your paper. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write that for the purpose of, of showing everybody that whole step. You said 180 equals 42 plus all these x's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus another 12. Then you subtracted 42 from each side, 138 equals 5x plus 12. Then what did you do? And what are we looking for? TAS is worth two of those x's. We know one of the x's is 25.2. So two of them is worth what? 25.2. 